Alright guys, I'm going to do a review on one of the comics I got during uh, my time at Megacon. And uh, I'm going to review Superman Gen 13, the, cro um, the DC Wildstorm crossover. Yes, I know now, technically the, D the Gen 13 characters are being incorporated into the DC universe, but this is a time when they were part of the Wildstorm universe, so this counts as a crossover. So Superman Gen 13, written by Adam Hughes, uh, artwork by probably one of my favorite artists in the industry right now, Lee Bermejo. And, uh, inks by John Nagayan. Nyberg. Oh, I cannot believe I'm I can't pronounce that name. But, yeah. Now, the story is basically, um, Gen 13, uh, Fairchild, uh, basically says, we're gonna take a vacation, and we're gonna vacation in Metropolis. And the rest of the team, uh, Grunge, uh, Roxy, and Burnout, and, uh, Rainmaker, are all, you know, kind of against it because they don't want to go to Metropolis. In fact, I think, if I remember right, one of them suggests they go to Gotham. And it's funny, too, because there was actually a planned crossover after this between Batman and Gen 13. But, uh, uh, at the time, uh, they just decided not to do it. So, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's cool, too. You can't, I, I have found the cover for the Batman Gen 13 crossover. I found it somewhere on Comic Vine. But, anyway... Uh, getting back to this. Now, they go to Metropolis, and none of them are excited except Fairchild. Kate, uh, uh, Fairchild, a.k.a. Caitlin, just wants to go so she can see Superman. She grew up basically, you know, learning all about Superman. She's wanted to be just like him. You know, she's considered Superman a huge role model. And this one, why I love, the, I love this comic, because it really plays on a lot of tropes, and I'll get into that in a second. First trope being, actually that it plays up on, you know, the campiness that Superman goes through. In fact, when they reach Metropolis, the first thing they see is Superman fighting a 50-foot-tall cyborg gorilla. Yeah. No lie. And Superman goes, um, during the fight, and it's funny, too, the people of Metropolis are like, yeah, 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 even the cops are like, you know, back up everybody, let Superman do his job, this is what he does. And the rest of the team's unimpressed, you know, it's like, oh, it's a monkey. Who cares? It, it, um, but Caitlin's all happy about it. But then the uh, gorilla knocks down Superman, and he crashes into uh, uh, Fairchild. And uh, he decides to leave her somewhere else. He, uh, they get knocked several blocks away. He puts her down. You know, he, put, he, just, he just leaves her somewhere else to keep her safe, and leaves her with his cape to keep her... Um, you know, to keep her warm. It's I guess I think they said it was a kind of cold in Metropolis that day, and he went back to fighting uh, the giant cyborg gorilla monster. Um, during this, the uh, the rest of Gen Thirteen decides, you know, you know what, um, we're gonna jump right in there and help out. So the rest of Gen Thirteen fights and defeats the gorilla, the gorilla monster. I can't believe I'm saying this, and um, they basically save the day. So, yeah. But anyway, this is where the story. Um, the, uh, this is where the story actually takes pl it, how it begins. Uh, Fairchild basically gets uh, amnesia and starts to believe she's Supergirl. Um, she actually is convinced... She gets amnesia and convinced she's, uh, she's Supergirl and goes around trying to save, uh, save other people, all the while, you know, she's making problems worse because she can't control her powers. Um, but yeah... In that time, the rest of the team, the rest of Gen 13s, trying to find Caitlyn, um, they can't find her, so they have to find Superman and um, ask for his help. So they go to the Daily Planet, and it basically turns into what I expected of this, and it, this is trope number two. The rest of Gen 13 basically plays up because since, since they didn't want to go to Metropolis, the reason being was because they said Superman, you know, is just too much of a stiff. What I mean is that they're at, they they uh, meet with uh, Clark Kent and Lois Lane, and they're talking to him at a diner, trying to get get them to you know can you find Superman, and uh, help us and tell him we need her his help to find our uh, our friend. And all the while they're actually it starts with grunge basically, and the rest of the team joins in that they just do not like Superman. They say he's too much of a stiff. Um, he's too he's too much of a he's too much of a Boy Scout. He. Um, he's so overpowered. You know, basically how a lot of our generation today looks at Superman. You know, how they look at Superman. Now, I've I've always been a huge fan of Superman, so... Um, and Superman actually was actually... Uh, Clark, who's listening to all this, is like, Okay, that's enough. I've heard enough. I'm, I need to get away from you people. 
But in, he uh, comes back to them as Superman and helps them go look for uh, Fairchild. Uh, and if you're wondering why I keep switching between Caitlyn and Fairchild, is because Caitlyn's her real name. Fairchild's her superhero name. In case anybody didn't know and kept wondering, you know, why does he keep saying Caitlyn and Fairchild and all that? But anyway, um, so throughout this, now remember, guys, there uh, there is no big supervillain plot. There is no um, supervillain they have to defeat. There's no giant uh, overbearing plot or anything. It's just um, the team looking for Fairchild. Um, the team joining Superman and helping him trying to find Fairchild. During all this, um, she's causing a lot of damage. And, I mean, she's uh, accidentally causes a house fire. And, th you know, the team, as the rest of the team, as they're hanging out, with, they're teaming up with Superman, one by one, they basically learn, you know, Superman, you, you know, he's actually a really good hero. Like, uh, for instance, Burnout, um, Burnout and Superman try to put out a fire, and during all this, Burnout joins Superman, and he's, he's looking for this uh, little girl in the fire. And Superman basically gra um, keeps the building from falling in as Burnout gets the child outside. And he's the first one to realize, you know, Superman's not so bad. And the rest of the team actually makes fun of him for actually trying to, you know, try to help the rest of the team cooperate with Superman. Um, they actually make fun of him outright, like, yeah, man, you're going to start wearing a cape and call yourself Superboy or something? I mean, they kind of come off as total dicks, but, you know, yeah. But then it moves on to uh, Roxy, a.k.a. Freefall, when um, they're trying to... Uh, they're try they find a lead on, uh, on uh, Fairchild, and Superman actually says, you know, I have you guys can't keep up with me. You know, um, I'll carry Fairchild since she, she can't really fly very fast. She has the power of gravity and levitation, but she. But he basically grabs Roxy and scoops her up in his arms and just shoots off. And uh, Grunge and Fr and uh, and uh, Rainmaker try to uh, follow him. And uh, during that, she's basically enamored of just being held by Superman. And it's funny at the end, towards the end of the comic, she says. Uh, she basically says, it was like being held by Jesus. So, <laughs> I kind of laughed out loud at that one. Um, I really just burst out laughing at that one. Um, because no, you would never really hear that at all. Like, uh, people have, um, like, whenever they meet, G whenever they meet, uh, Superman, they never say that. So I was kind of, I was laughing because, not because I thought it was funny, but because I, the, the comment Roxy said just took me so aback. <laughs> so... Um, I laughed at that in that sense, but um, yeah, she basically um, she's just enamored with the with Superman, and then um, it does get a villain in some ways. Ba um, what happens is that this uh, guy who's been working on a robot suit and a nuclear bomb. Remember, guys, this is the DC universe, and Metropolis suspension of disbelief isn't is inevitable. So really, suspend your you know go suspension of disbelief here. Uh, he basically says, I want to fight Superman and all that, and he's causing this damage, and there's this roadblock, and Rainmaker's actually trying to uh, tell the people, you know, we gotta, you know, you guys gotta move, you know, you gotta, people are getting injured, um, we can't get to the problem if you guys get in our way, and the people of Metropolis are just actually throwing stuff at her and yelling at her, saying this is her fault, Super superheroes suck and all that, and then in comp flies down Superman, and he just basically shouts, you know, people of Metropolis, I need your help. You know, there's people suffering. I, um, I need you to help out your fellow man. And then suddenly, just like that, the people, um, the people um, in the crowd basically just suddenly just change their opinion. They're like, oh my God, you know, we're we're all with you, Superman. You know, what can we do to help? And he, he basically just, it's not like he shouts and orders them you know, do it or I'll hurt you kind of way. It's more like, you know, he, Superman actually is like, he's be he's imp he's uh, begging the people of Metropolis to help out their um, fellow man. And just like that, the people around him just suddenly, you know, they basically like, yeah, man, we'll help out Superman. Come on, guys. Um, and Rainmaker's like, oh my god, he does have that effect on people. And that's what I've always liked uh, Superman. They don't, tr they basically play against all those tropes Basically saying, it's not because Superman's so overpowered, and I really hate it when people say Superman isn't relevant. And that's kind of what they were playing up on in here, that through the Gen 3, other kids outside of Fairchild were 
You know, this was basically saying, you know, Superman's out of touch with the world, he's too overpowered, all that, and it really just throws it right back in the in Gen 13's face, or the people reading this comic who are, you know, just like, yeah, fuck Superman and all that. Um, Superman's always been like, he proves that he's kind of like, he's like an inspiration. He's basically what people want to be, like Superman. And at the end, Grunge basically learns, yeah, Superman's... Con Grunge is actually the slowest one, because he's played... He really is a... He, I'm not going to lie, as a fan of Gen 13, he is a dumbass. He is a big dumbass. But he's the last one to learn. In fact, he's like, oh, come on, I'm, I'm the only one left now who doesn't think Superman's cool. But by the end, everyone thinks it's cool. And um, another thing is that Supergirl shows up, because when she hears there's a a quote-unquote imposter Supergirl ruining her, her rep reputation, she actually flies in out of nowhere and just punches um, Fairchild dead in the face. And uh, actually, she gets hit so hard she gets her memory back. But she doesn't get to see Superman because um, he has to go back and handle the damage. So I thought that was really cool. But yeah, at the end, there's actually a really cool ending of the rest of the team coming back home to Mr. Lynch and... Uh, he, he gives uh, Fairchild a package, and in the package is Superman's cape. And she, he basically writes a note saying, you know, I'm sorry we couldn't, get, we couldn't meet face-to-face. -face. Um, here's something, you know, I hope your trip to Metropolis was very nice, and here's something as a parting gift. So he actually, in the package, hands her super, gives her one of his capes. So I thought that was really cool. But yeah, now on to the rating. Um... I really do love Superman in Gen 13, you know. I do love both te I love uh, Superman, you know, uh, se uh, my uh, second favorite DC superhero next to, you know, Hal Jordan. Um, and I love Gen 13. I've always been a big fan of, the, of uh, Gen 13 and all their stories. Well, a majority of them, anyway. But, um, yeah, I really like this story. It's only three... It's only three issues long, and I got the trade of it, which is actually kind of hard to find. This came out in 2000... 2003, I believe, 2004, somewhere in the 2000s, I can't remember, but, um, it's really good, it's three, it's collect, I collected the trade, it's three separate issues, um, Libra Mayho's art, or Libra Gimeo, I can't pronounce it, I just, Libra Mayho, oh, man, I love his artwork, and the inks in here by John, uh, Nyberg, hope I'm saying that right, um, is also pretty excellent, but, God, I love Lee Bermejo when he draws either Superman or Batman. It's just, you know, it's very nice to look at. And he also draws the, um, Lee uh, Bermejo actually draws the uh, Gen 13 characters pretty well in here as well. Um, I really dig the, uh, the, the, um, uh, just the inks to it as well. But, um, yeah. Now, I found, I look, I didn't find this at Amazon. I got this for about five bucks in a trade, in a box of trades. I found at Megacon, but I looked online, in case you're wondering, if you're looking online, I looked on Amazon, I don't know where it is on, like, um, eBay or whatever, because I usually just go to Amazon to get my shit, um, if I'm ordering something offline, but, um, yeah, I looked online, now, there is one that was like, it's really hard to find, it's really kind of rare, I don't know why, but, um... It is worth it. If you're a fan of Superman and you really like the whole Superman is still relevant in the world, and they do, and there's actually a, I forgot to mention this, there's actually a really awesome um, uh, talk between Clark and Lois. There's just them walking down the street, and the, keep in mind, this is a time when they're married. Um, it's just, just them walking down the street after, you know, talking to uh, Gen, the rest of the Gen 13 team, and it's just them talking about how, why Superman is still relevant, you know. And uh, Clark is actually really beaten down by what the kids, uh, the other kids say. And he's actually like, you know, do do the does the world really think of me like that? And Lois basically brings his spirits up. But um, I'm gonna give this a well, actually no, I, I forgot to mention the rest of the price. But it's real. I don't know how hard it is to find. I got this just on a whim. I really like it. If you can find it in like a comic book shop or something, it's nine ninety five. It's actually nine ninety five in the U.S. and actually sixteen ninety five in Canada. So yeah, sorry Canada. <laughs> really sorry about that, but it's really worth it if you're a fan of Superman and these kind of stories. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. If you're expecting like a big action um, universal story, you know, a big universal crisis type story with Superman and Gen thirteen teaming up. 
you're probably not going to fight to find that. The plot, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5, just because the dialogue's really good, the artwork's beautiful, but the story is just so simplistic of the whole amnesia thing. The whole amnesia story is just, I, it was just kind of a boring storyline, but still, the dialogue and how they play it up is beautiful. I'm go I gotta not, but I have to knock some points off for just being, oh, girl with amnesia thinks she's someone else, and that's it. But, you know, it is still good. If you're look and uh, remember, if you're looking for an action-packed story, um, there is some action in here, but it's really just um, Superman and Gen 13 looking for uh, looking for their friend. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, like I said, this is a really good one, four out of five for me, and uh, I'm out.